Hey everybody, it's Psych Chrissy here. Welcome to your Tuesday night Life Crusher Live. I'm here every Tuesday night shouting out to everybody out there who loves a little bit of psych content on their Tuesday. Who doesn't? <laughs> I know there's people out there, you know, obviously um, watching from their lounge rooms, um, wondering what site Chrissy is going to come up with this week. So if you're here, um, I'm going from my phone, phone this week because I was using an app to do my um, my lives and it went all crackly um, the last couple of weeks. And I thought, oh, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to go live on my phone. But as a result, sometimes I do not see the comments. So bear with me if you're talking to Site Chrissy and I can't see what the heck you're talking about, then I will answer you after the broadcast. <laughs> but if you're here, give me a like, give me a wave, give me a share. You know that the more people see the broadcast, obviously the more people I can help. So feel free to do that, guys. And tonight we're cracking into some really fascinating content and something that I deal with a lot, not just in my private practice, but in my everyday business life, in my coaching profile life, in my day-to-day -day interactions with everybody life. Because as you could imagine, nobody really likes failure, do they? <laughs> no, I get it. So tonight, guys, I'm going to talk to you all about fear of failure, why do we fear it? Why is it such a problem? Um, where does it come from? And what the heck can we do about it? How do we get better at mastering failure and being okay with it? Because at the end of the day, guys, uh, we have to cope with it um, because failure is just part of life, unfortunately. Love it or hate it, failure is just what we have to put up with day to day um, in everyday life. So we've just got to get a good, good, get good or get better, <laughs> get better at managing um, the discomfort associated with fearing failure. So hey Jules, welcome to the broadcast tonight. Awesome to see you here. Um, like I said, give me a wave if you're here and uh, I can see the comments tonight. So that's good. Um, you never really know what Facebook's going to do. So let's get into the content, guys, overcoming fear of failure. And often what we see is that generally people... I find start to avoid doing things in their life when they've got an, I suppose, an incessant or an, an underlying fear of failure. Often what you see is people floating around, kind of opting out of opportunities. Um, they might not challenge themselves in certain ways because they're obviously worried about the consequences for themselves emotionally, psychologically, socially, and in their relationships in the event they were to fail you know, and I'm going to explain why that's a thing and where it comes from as well. So um, the first sign, and I'm going to get into the signs of, and symptoms of if you particularly um, subscribe to or you have a fear of failure, I'm going to tell you all of the things to watch out for. Because if you're showing these signs, it might be that you've got an underlying fear of failure that is obviously going on for you. Um, and stopping you from moving forward and taking on some awesome opportunities in your life. So, hey, Lisa. Hey, Cassie. Welcome to the broadcast tonight. I'm going to turn you guys into fear-eating monsters tonight. You're going to leave the broadcast tonight fist-pumping. You're going to be really motivated to take on fear, um, overcome it, and just live your best life as a result of the broadcast tonight. <laughs> I don't have many expectations of you guys, do I? <laughs> <laughs> as a result of my broadcast. Um, but where does it come from? Where did bloody fear of failure come from? And it's, a, it's an absolute pain in the behind. Um, it's something that I've learned to master over the years. I've had to, you know, when you get into psychology land, um, you know, when you get into being a forensic psychologist of all things, you know, often I'm, you know, running around a prison space a lot of the time. Um, and then I start my own business from scratch. Um, <laughs> there was no room for psych Chrissy fearing failure because if I did any of that, I would have been squ washed like a bloody ant. So I'm going to give you my hot tips and tricks tonight. So why do we fear failure? What we know, 
like anything that I talk about, often it is derived from our early learning experiences. A lot of where most things come from, guys, a lot of our fears, our insecurities, our hang-ups, unfortunately come from early life. <laughs> um, because it's when we're most vulnerable or when we're most, I suppose, susceptible to emotional development. Um, you know, so for people that have a particular anxiety about uh, failing things, often they may have experienced an early learning life um, that was overly punitive. Um, and that could be from parents, it could be from a schooling environment, it could be from sibling relationships. You know, if you were consistently told that, you know, you weren't good enough or you never did anything right or that's wrong and that's bad that you did something wrong, um, you know, and you experience a highly critical early learning experience, chances are you are not going to like failure, okay? Because everything about your environment when you were growing up and when you were younger told you that failure was not okay. And in fact, maybe failure was quite disastrous as an emotional experience for you in the way that your environment told you messages about failure. Um, it could it could potentially also be that you were consistently undermined or humiliated um, in your early learning experiences, particularly maybe in schooling life um, as well. So you've had all of these negative experiences of when you've gone to attempt something or try something or do something in a certain way, you've received all of this negative feedback as a youngster about you know how you've done that wrong and why that's not okay. So then as you could appreciate, um, it's not difficult to understand that as you grow and develop into an adult, you would be hyper cautious of making mistakes because you would be in fear of the feedback that you might receive from your environment. And in, in addition to that, not only feedback that you might um, receive from your environment, but then the internal experience that often is generated from that, you know, um, feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem, all of those resulting consequences emotionally for someone when they're consistently told that they haven't done something right and that's a bit of a disaster. So what are the signs and symptoms that you may be um, fearful of failure? And for everybody that's watching tonight, you might automatically go, oh, I know that's me. I know that's me. I run around avoiding things like no one's business. Uh, but here's some, uh, I suppose, some specific signs that you might have an underlying fear of failure, um, particularly Number one, and I often see this um, more so in business life, actually, when I, when I work with business owners a lot, but um, you can see it everywhere. You can see this in the workplace. You can see it um, in the schooling environment. You can see it in interactions in relationships. But if you notice somebody having, or even yourself, you've got a real reluctance to try anything new. Um, you're really scared of challenging yourself in different ways. And as a result, you find yourself opting out or saying no to things or just being really reluctant to try anything because you're worried that, I suppose, not only you might fail, but that you might be rejected or humiliated or embarrassed or all of the emotional consequences of maybe not getting something right the first time. So as a result, you just go, eh, I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just not going to put myself in those positions where I might be trying something new or challenging myself in any particular way. So the second tip or the second, I suppose, uh, flag um, that you might have a fear of failure is that you self-sabotage. So you might procrastinate, you might make excuses for not doing things, um, you obviously walk around avoiding things, um, you know, but there's a real lack of activity or action um, in your approach to things. And procrastinating is an interesting one because I get a lot of people say to me, you know, it's like, Chrissy, I don't know why, but I just can't seem to get things done or I just daydream a lot. And a lot of people just think that's just lack of focus. But actually, it's a self-sabotaging behavior. It keeps you locked into a directionless zone. You never get anything done. So that's probably the most frustrating thing about procrastination. But 
procrastination can also keep you locked into a state of, I, I suppose there's a level of discontent attached to it, but it kind of keeps you from getting uncomfortable as well because you're not really challenging yourself in any way. You kind of go round and round in circles without getting things done. Another indicator uh, of fear of failure definitely can be low self-esteem and low self-confidence because obviously if you're not trying anything new, if you're not challenging yourself, if you're running around in, a, in avoidance mode, you're not going to feel real good about yourself because you can see life passing you by. You probably overthink missed opportunities. You're probably, oh, duh, why didn't I do that? You kick yourself for things and you get frustrated with yourself, but you just can't seem to work yourself into a position where you're able to change that or take action. And that potentially is going to be because you're so fearful of, of failing at something. Um, another one, which is really interesting, and I see this one a lot, and for, for some of you watching, this may be um, one of the top indicators that you have a fear of failure, and that is perfectionism, okay? So you have a strong desire to get everything right. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be in a certain way. You've got to, um, everything's got to be uh, the way that you like it. It can't deviate from any of that because what perfectionists try and do is they try and control their environment to the extreme so that nothing can go wrong. But the problem is, and particularly so failure doesn't eventuate, absolutely. Um, the problem is that for perfectionists, the reasons why they burn themselves out is because you cannot physically control everything that's going on in your environment. We would like to, but it's bloody impossible. <laughs> Hands up, Lisa. That's you. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, your desire to take control of everything is about, of you know, that fallacy of, well, if I control everything, then there's no way in hell that anything's going to fail. Um, but what we know is we can't fully con take control of everything. And then as a result, perfectionism actually sends us around the twist. <laughs> so that could be another sign, guys. So let's get into some strategies. What do you do if you're showing signs of, of an underlying fear of failure and you float around in your life doing certain things that is driven by that? Well, number one, one of the things that you can do is analyze in a certain situation, if you're going, oh, I'm avoiding this or I'm procrastinating, I know I should be trying it, but I'm really worried about what the outcome's going to be. Go through a, I suppose, um, an analysis. What are all the potential failures that you could face as a result of taking on this new challenge? Write them all down, um, flesh them all out because one of the things that people with fear of failure do not like is uncertainty. They absolutely do not like it in one iota. Um, so if you can troubleshoot all the potential possibilities, all the potential failures, just acclimatize to that, get used to it, read it over, adjust to it, understand it, visualize it, guess what? You're creating a level of certainty in that. Because if you, I suppose, expose yourself to all of the potential failures and you understand them to a certain degree and maybe even troubleshoot around that, they may not be as scary as you think. You know, so preparing for that, creating your own sense of certainty can definitely take some of the anxiety away from fear of failure because you've kind of been there and you've done that and you've worked it all out and you've come out the other end. Um, number two can be really challenging yourself to think in more positive ways. One of the really unhelpful thinking styles attached to fear of failure is catastrophic thinking. You feel you fear failure because you think of all of these bloody catastrophic scenarios that are potentially going to result from you ta taking some sort of action. You know, so then you go, oh my God, like how would I ever cope if that was to happen and then this was to happen and that was going to happen? But what we know is that often a lot of the time, they're just unhelpful predictions. They're not reality, um, they're possibilities, but they're not actual events yet. Okay, so you can challenge yourself to think more positively. You can say, yeah, that could happen, but what about if this happened? And what if it was great? And what if I could do this? And what if I was, if I nailed it? And what if, you know, I was the most amazing person on the planet as a result of taking that action? 
<laughs> really trying to balance yourself out with some more positive thinking can actually work wonders in your pursuit for overcoming a fear of failure. Um, number three is really challenging yourself. Um, what's the worst case scenario and is it really that bad? Um, taking some perspective and don't get me wrong, like you could potentially think up a really bad scenario and go, yeah, it's like Chrissy, it's bloody that bad. Like I get it. But also you could, um, find some merit in that scenario, not being as bad or even in the worst case scenario going, oh, good probably deal with that. Like, you know, that's going to be inconvenient and it's probably going to be a challenge, but is it going to sort of uh, ruin my life? Probably not. Am I going to be able to um, live a happy life as a result of that outcome? Probably so. You know, I'll live to tell another tale, even if the worst case scenario does eventuate. So that level of perspective, ta perspective taking can really help. Number four and the final one, guys, is having a plan B. In the event of a worst case scenario, and I practice this one a lot, I try and create um, a whole lot of new opportunities for myself in the event that something goes wrong. So I don't hang all of my pennies on one outcome. And then as a result, um, I suffer the adversity of that one outcome because I don't have a backup plan. So trying to plan for failure can actually help you cope with the failure if it does actually eventuate. So you go, okay, well, that's happened. That's okay because I've already prepared three other things that I can potentially do as a result. So it's not all doom and gloom. So there you go, guys. So there's four things that I want you to try and do to get used to overcoming failure because we can't escape it. All right. We can't. Failure is part of life. Accepting failure, tolerating failure, building resilience to failure is actually how we, I suppose, build a solid sense of self. It's how we build self-esteem. It's how we feel better. It's how we live a kick-ass life. So number one, analyze all the potential failures and create a sense of certainty around that. If you've thought about all the potentials and you've troubleshooted around that, then it might not be is anxiety provoking. Some positive thinking could be this, but it also could be that and that could be amazing. Um, number three, worst case scenario, perspective taking. Is it really that bad? Um, am I still going to survive? Am I still going to live a good life in the event of A, B and C happening? Okay. And number four is having a plan B. So having some backup uh, go to problem solving techniques or opportunities or other things that you can do in event of your worst case scenario. Now, if you can practice some of those strategies, fear of failure doesn't have to be that scary at all when you've got some of these uh, management strategies in place. Do the same strategies work for anxiety? A hundred percent because fear is actually based on anxiety. Anxiety is fear. So it might not even be fear of failure that you're practicing some of these strategies. It could be just your tendency to overthink things because that's where anxiety can come from. It could be your fear of rejection. It could be your fear, any sort of fear you can actually, um, that's linked to anxiety, you can actually work through some of these strategies and they can be super helpful, not just fear of failure. Okay, this can work on any sort of anxieties that you might have. So give it a go, guys. Analyzing all the potential failures, some positive thinking, some worst case scenario perspective taking and planning plan B, having some backup options will help alleviate anxieties associated with fear of failure. And in fact, probably alleviate a whole range of general anxieties in day to day life. So there we go, guys. You've been an awesome audience tonight. I've loved the engagement. I've loved your way, uh, your little waves and your comments. So thank you for that. And as always, thank you so much for supporting me and joining me on a Tuesday night. Share me around. There's probably a billion people out there that need to watch this broadcast. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.